Hello, it is I, Dr. Brian Lorgan111, and welcome back to Chain World, where, in the previous episode, we decoded a couple of the clues left for us by Cthulhu. Uh, and just as a reminder, basically Cthulhu said, there's starter armor, better gear is hidden elsewhere. We did find a better sword already. You may find a monument in a familiar form. The Bingo Monument, which we found Look closely. It had three highlighted items that were sitting on stone rather than stone brick. And two of them turned out to be clues. I'll take a look on the map in a minute. And the eye shows the way to the dungeon. And we kind of started going along, along that path, I believe, as well. And so basically, the bingo items that were highlighted were a spruce sapling... And sure enough, I've got the kind of mapping overview that we did last time. There was a forest of spruce over here, and we chopped them down, and we found an item. There was sugar, and there was sugar cane over at the cow farm over here, and we found an item over there. And there was a fish highlighted, and we haven't found that thing yet. And I don't remember kind of off the top of my head exactly what was over here. It looks like it could be kind of fishing dock kind of stuff. And so I'm guessing we should take a look over there. And then the other thing with the eye points the way to the dungeon, we found kind of the weird, uh, kind of like on a pole, the item frame that first had the eye of Ender and then an arrow and kind of like a boat going out into the ocean that possibly is a kind of series of signposts that's leading us somewhere. And so those are the things that I want to investigate today. Uh, I ended up with lots of extra wood last time, and so I'm going to dump some of that off that we don't immediately need. And apart from that, I still I don't think I have any string. And there wasn't any string from the mob farm, because I presume it doesn't do spiders. I wouldn't mind having a bow. Uh, and I even have some arrows that I found in one of these chests. But I don't think I actually found a bow or materials to make a bow uh, anywhere. And so perhaps we'll have to venture out without them. I'm going to go through these chests one more time, but I'll do that off camera. All right, I did not find materials for a bow. The moon is setting, the sun will be rising. And so let's plan to go outside. Uh, there is a little lake right here. I doubt that one would put kind of fishing stuff here and I don't see any signs of anywhere. I imagine, let's see, there's creepers. There's some guys burning up over there. I'm just wondering if there's gonna be spiders anywhere that I might be able to kill for some spider silk, for some string that we could turn into a bow. Uh, but I didn't take a good look down here. There is there is a structure down here that I didn't look at before that looks like it could be like a fishing hut or house or something that somehow I missed the first time around. And it looks like there's kind of water that kind of goes down there from somewhere over here. So let's ride the water down and go check out that structure and see if that might be a type of fishing place. Let's also just kind of inspect over here. Don't immediately see anything there. Uh, but it looks like the water goes right down over here. And I suppose I can just go, wee and jump over that. So we've got the top of a little waterfall here that, just out of curiosity, does this go anywhere? Kind of, not really. All right, but I don't see anything over here. I'm not expecting it. Uh, but if this does turn into kind of a fishing hut kind of place, then I might expect, expect to find something. And I don't see any bad guys. We will not forget to eat food. Is there anything behind the water? There is something behind the waterfall. Oh, right. I think I remember seeing this in Proxy's video as well. Uh, let's go explore it really quick. Oh, I hear a skeleton. And I'm not all that well prepared for skeletons. Got some kind of cave. So just caves. Yeah, I think possibly down here was some stuff that Proxy had prepared for Cthulhu. Lots of redstone and lapis. I don't remember now. It's been so long. There's some gold down there. And iron blocks. Wow. All kinds of crazy blocks. And what do we have over here? Oh, wow. The Pick of Destiny. Uh, efficiency 4, Fortune 3. That's some good stuff. And some TNT and some diamonds and dynamite okay um well i guess i should take these things right why not 
Perhaps we can do something else exciting and interesting with them. I'm already off track. There's so many things to explore in this world. Uh, I don't know that I really need the metal for anything right now. So I think I will leave it down here. Kind of worried about running into some mobs somewhere inside of here. Uh, Alright, this seems to be maybe dead ending. I am going to go ahead and get back on track and try to go explore that fishing house. And see what we can discover out there. And so... We will do that. I've also made some boats. And so after going to the fishing house, we can go back out to where we saw that... Ooh, I hear a spider. Maybe there's just like a cave kind of adjacent to something over here. And I suppose at some point, yeah, I'll maybe do some of my own caving just to... Ooh! All right, so you see there's something like underneath the water over here. And did I see something over here as well? Maybe not. Okay. Oh, Proxy's residence. Here may she rest in peace. And there is a fishing rod here that's kind of upside down and pointing in this direction, which is down to the little thing that we saw. But let's go ahead and look inside the house first. Sounds like we may have rats in the basement. Go kill them. And all oh, the bloody trail <laughs> that leads to her bed, I suppose. All right, in a furnace. And all right, very nice, very nice. Uh, let's go check out what rats might lie in the basement, I suppose. Um, hopefully it's nothing too scary. Oh, I hear zombies. Oh boy, is there a zombie dungeon? Master Ninja Proxy. All right. Where she is dead. All right. I definitely hear bad guys. Okay. And there's something here. Oh, okay. I see bad guys. <laughs> and we only have nine hearts left. So let's try to stay alive. Okay. That might get me my... What do you call that I want to get? Okay, it's kind of closed off over there. Oh boy. I see all kinds of bad things over there. I'm going to close off this way. Let's do one thing at a time. Uh, it could just be that it's a dark space back there. And not necessarily a spawner. Because it could be the case that there's a lot of things lit up over here. Okay. And we are in the version of Minecraft where you end up with tons of zombies walking around carrying eggs. Uh, because... Zombies could spawn, the chicken zombies, the chicken jockeys could spawn, and the chickens, whoops, crap, would still lay eggs. Uh, yes, such as this guy, and then they'd leave the eggs on the ground, and then the zombies would carry the eggs, and they'd never despawn, because we were in 1.7.4, and that was one of the bugs that Mojang brilliantly introduced, uh, and then later they got wise and said, hey, we should have the zombies that spawn on tops of chickens. Those chickens should actually despawn and not lay eggs, so we don't end up with a million entities around. All right, and so since I kind of closed off the back... Oh boy, there's a skeleton over there. He's going to shoot at me, and I don't have as good of a defense against that. So I'm going to close this back off. All right. <laughs> I've still not really managed to do the thing that I wanted to do. Obviously, we found a bit of crazy stuff that's going on over there. How did I get down here in the first place? Uh, did I climb here? Yes, I climbed here. And so we may do a bit more exploring with that. I don't want to get into anything that's too dangerous before I've had a chance to find kind of all of Cthulhu's clues and things. Oops. Because I just wonder if there happens to be more gear. Uh, that I might want. I'm not sure how we're doing on daylight. And so let's check out this. And what do we see here? We see a dying squid. And nothing else particularly obvious. It looks like it could be a tomb once again. Oh, hey, look at this. 
And G, okay. So this is the fishing one. Okay, great. And so this should probably have a Y coordinate is my guess. 93. Yes, these things all sound vaguely plausible anyway. All right, so I found one of the things I was looking for. So that's great. Thank you, Cthulhu, for a very good puzzle with very good hints. Uh, I enjoyed the bingo puzzle a whole lot. We will possibly come back and try to fight through more of Proxy's little dungeon over there. Uh, but now, let's move on back this way and try to find the other thing that I'm originally setting off to do. Um, sun's going to be going down. I think I'll take a little bit of a risk and keep on moving, since we're going to be doing some boating, probably. All right, and so I've made it over to here. Let me go ahead and hop out of the boat. We'll go chase it down again. You will recall, in the previous episode... We found up there, there was one of these poles with an item frame that had an eye of ender on it. And then we happened to randomly see this one that had an arrow uh, that I didn't know what to make of. But I suppose if you're reading it kind of as a sign, it suggests going kind of up and left, up in this direction. And there was a boat out in the water over here. And so I'm going to kind of sail off in this direction uh, to the northwest, I suppose, kind of into the setting sun. And just see if we happen to see another one of these signs. That might be a marker or some other clue of something out here. And if not, we can always sail back home. Aha! So I'm traveling in this direction and I see what appears to be another one of those item frames on a pole. As well as some kind of monument of some sort. And some torches, some signs of life. And so I'm going to try to preserve the boat if I can. And we will see what this one has. It's got a redstone torch, it looks like, up here. Redstone torch, some dandelion, which kind of look like they're in a row, or they might just be kind of randomly here. All right, I'm going to need to worry about mobs spawning soon. Okay, and these are bricks that are definitely, oh, from the stronghold. And I wonder if this is the entrance to the stronghold. Oh, wow. Uh, we've got some skeletons spawning over there already. I still don't have a bow. Uh, I did get two pieces of string, which is not enough to make a bow. I wonder if this is where the stronghold is. I wonder if Cthulhu located the stronghold. Uh, he obviously made some ender eyes because he had one to put on the sign. And yeah, there's a staircase down here. Let's see. I guess I'm going to light up a little bit more of this while I have the opportunity and monsters are spawning over there. Okay, there's skeletons over there. Let's just go down here and do some exploring, I suppose. Yeah, let's go down here and do some exploring. <laughs> and for safety, I'll go ahead and close that up behind me. Uh, and we'll make sure that things are nice and bright in here. But I wonder if this is actually the stronghold since those are stronghold bricks, like the mossy stone bricks. I think at 1.8 you can craft them, but I'm pretty sure in 1.7 you could only find them in the stronghold. And Cthulhu's clue said something about the eye points the way to the dungeon. Yep, okay. All right. And so I hear a skeleton. Without a bow, I really do need to try to kill some... Oh, right. Okay, we must be right near the silverfish room. I wonder if he put any of the eyes in. I wonder if he's been to the end. Like, I wonder. I wonder so many things. I don't see the skeleton. This whole area makes me nervous. Uh, especially now that I'm spawning silverfish. Um, let's just be extremely wary of them. I see a zombie down here. Looks like this part's relatively well lit up. But it does kind of intersect a ravine. Kind of interesting formations here. And what do we have going on here? I bet you that is the blocked off entrance to the silverfish room. I should be able to tell if there are silverfish blocks here. I hear silverfish. This pick should be good enough that I'll be able to detect them because they'll break more slowly. So let's kind of gent gently speculatively find a good place kind of dig down to where we think we might be a little bit safe in the stronghold. And again, I'm not going to take too many huge risks. 
Uh, but I do want to just kind of explore and see the state of the stronghold over here. All right, I keep putting torches down where I need to place blocks. All right, it seems like a lot of it is lit up because we're not getting monsters here. I see lots of torches. There is indeed the silverfish room. It's blocked off. I can't immediately see. It doesn't look like uh, all of the ender eyes have been put in the, what do you call? In the end portal. Um, but we'll have to get above it in order to see just how many may already be in there. And yeah, I guess Cthulhu or one of his predecessors did a bit of exploring in Stronghold. All right, I hear Skeleton up that way, so I don't really want to go that way. Yeah, the only previous people uh, in this particular chain world that I've watched, I watched a little bit of Proxy uh, playing. I only became aware of it uh, when Cthulhu invited me. And so I watched just a touch of Proxy playing in order to get a sense of kind of what was going on and what it might be like to decide if I wanted to take him up on the offer to play this chain world. And I decided it looked interesting, but then didn't really look any more from there. And so I didn't really know what to expect. All right, let's go back to the end portal room and get above it and just try to see, uh, ascertain whether or not any of the what he calls are filled in. I think I've already gotten lost. I think that we're back around to the yes. Okay, so it's through that wall. So it must be back over here. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to get back above it. Let's try to determine if and how many of the end portal thingies. Okay, that seems to be silverfish. There we go. All right, and there's still a bunch of missing ones. I can see four missing ones already right there. Uh, yeah. Okay, so there's lots. Can I do this one too? Looks like there might only be two that are already in there. So we would need to get a whole lot of Eyes of Ender if we wanted to go to the end. I do not particularly want to go to the end. For anyone who has seen me playing Space Bard recently, or really any series where I've had to fight the Ender Dragon, you will know that I'm not very good at the Ender Dragon fight. Uh, and so I have no particular interest. I do not own a clock. A clock would be pretty nice to know what kind of day I'd be coming back out into. And so, yeah, I have no particular interest in that. The person that I have selected to be my descendant, who I have not revealed to you all who that is yet. Hmm, it's still nighttime. I don't hear anything immediately outside. And I do have a boat so that we could hop in the water quickly. So I'm going to hop in the water and get away before anything gets me. Great. Uh, the person who I've selected may or may not be interested in going to the end. So we could try to rack up some ender pearls so that we could at least open the way to the end for them so they, should they choose to do that. Um, that's a possibility. In any case, all right. Uh, we found the stronghold that was interesting. There was the Eye of Ender, then there was the Arrow, and then the Redstone Torch. And I suppose the Eye of Ender was just kind of like for the first clue to have something to say, and it also kind of suggested what we were going to find. The Arrow was kind of pointing in a particular direction, and we saw the boat out on the water that also suggested going in this direction. And then the Redstone Torch... I don't know if there was much rhyme or reason to the Redstone Torch. I guess it was kind of pointing up to the entrance. Uh, that Cthulhu left there, or whoever left there. I imagine Cthulhu left it there. Item frames are interesting because they render before the rest of the world, and so I could see the item frame before the actual terrain kind of rendered in. All right, so in any case, now I have tracked down both of the things I originally wanted to do at the start of the episode. However, as a result of finding the NG book, from the fishing clue, we have one more thing that we could go after. And so I would like to do that. Can I, during the day, or sorry, during the nighttime, successfully get up here without getting shot by a skeleton and knocked off and taking fall damage and dying? I don't see any more enemies up here. So we're gonna take a shot and see if I can just get up here. 
without taking any damage, hopefully. Sun's about to rise anyway. Don't hear any bad guys. But now that I have the third book, the B, I, N, G, and O books, each had numbers that seemed like they were coordinates. And so I think the next thing that we should do is to go to the location of those three coordinates. And I presume they'll be X, Y, Z in that order, like B, I, N, G, O. And if I want to get in here, I suppose an easy thing to do is just to go like this and go over the fence. A little bit ugly because I'm leaving a little pillar there, but that's okay. Okay, so we have B-I-N-G-O, bingo! And the coordinates are 63, I'm going to write these down on a sheet of paper. 63, and is this 93? Yes, 93. And then the third one was some crazy three-digit number, four-something, 493. 63, 93, 493. And then let's take a look at the coordinates a little bit and just try to determine approximately where that would be. Uh, and so basically 63 would be in this direction. 93 would be about at the height that I am at. And 493 would be about 400 blocks over in this direction. Okay, that would be almost, that would be basically like down here somewhere. And so I think it might actually be useful to take a map or two to kind of go in that direction. Uh, and so I think I'll probably do that. If I go kind of past the end of this and go down here, I might be able to map it out because uh, I think it would be fun to keep on mapping things. Um, I think actually that might be something that I need to do in the next episode. I ended up spending more time in this episode uh, on some unexpected adventures than I expected. Uh, let me take a look at the time for this episode so far. Okay, I think it is too late to get started to go on this final leg of the adventure that Cthulhu seems to have left for me. So let me just outline for the next episode. I plan to go out there and bring some maps to kind of map the area to get out to those coordinates. Discover what Cthulhu has left for me there. And then after I've done that, uh, we need to fulfill his request, which is to build kind of a monument and entomb something there uh, to memorialize him. And then depending upon what shape I am in, at that point, I need to start kind of like setting up some various fun hidden surprises for uh, the next person in line, our future descendant, and also see if there's any other things that I want to build. Obviously, we have lots of materials available. Uh, so I think that's basically where things are headed. I hope, as always, that you guys are having a great day. I'm definitely having a great day as I am enjoying things here in the chain world, and I will see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.